Uh, and this is a wonderful day. I'm speaking as your comptroller, is also as the chairman of Texas Victory. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you have been able to log one million telephone calls. Uh, and I want to say thank you to all the volunteers who've done this. This has been a grassroots like year, and it's paying off. And uh, like our the governor the here, who like is going to speak in a minute, <laughs> he understands that the Texas way is not the D.C. way, and that we have a whole <laughs> And what he's done is, Governor, with the restraint of the budget, we have right at about $8 billion in the rainy day fund, uh, which makes us head and shoulders, I like to use the words like head and shoulders, head and shoulders <laughs> above lots of other states, and that's why people do look to us, they do move to this state. Uh, we have uh, the most uh, folks coming into this state than any place else, and it's because we have a rational, reasonable climate here. And I also want to commend Governor Perry, our ranch in a county bordering Mexico. And this governor took state dollars and put them along the border in technical, uh, technological aspects, um, cameras, etc., and boots on the ground. And I will just tell you, I feel a whole lot safer because Governor Rick Perry is governor, will be governor again. <laughs> Susan, thank you very much. Steve, I want to say thank you for your leadership and for just being able to uh, have a leader like you day in and day out. David, thank you for standing up for one of the most important industries that we have in this country, uh, the oil and gas industry, and, and he hit the nail on the head when he talked about uh, this administration. We saw two very clear messages from them. One, Deepwater Horizon, uh, absolutely we need to find out what happened, put the corrective measures in place and make sure it never happens again, yeah. but the idea that you would shut down all of our deep water offshore drilling is a type of knee-jerk reaction from this left-wing administration that would destroy not just Texas, uh, but this entire country from the standpoint of a strategic ability to be able to find those fossil fuels out there. Cap and trade is the other one. Uh, you know, hopefully cap and trade is dead. Amen. Deep Amen. dead. And there's one way to make sure that it's dead, and that is to elect United States congressmen and women all across this country. It's going to go to Washington, D.C. Make sure it never passes. Susan, it's been an honor to serve with you through the years, both uh, as the Agriculture Commissioner and as a, a state rep back in the years, and, and watch you and, and work with you and what have you. It's, it's wonderful to have a comptroller uh, that you trust, uh, that knows how to count, <laughs> and uh, it's important for us in this state to have somebody that's going to be estimating that budget as we get there um, here in, in January, and, and we know exactly where we are from the standpoint of I know there's a host of members of the legislature here in both the House and the Senate. Thank you all for the work that you have done. Uh, the fact of the matter is uh, people continue to move to the state of Texas in record numbers because they realize that there is still a land of opportunity in America, and it's called Texas. Woo! jobs over the course of the next uh, six, eight months as we go to Austin, Texas to make sure that that is exactly how we keep it, keep our taxes low so that those job creators from across the country that are looking uh, to, to relocate, those people in California that are going to continue to be moving out of that state if they keep their taxes high, or Washington State that's talking about passing that personal income tax. We want them to know that there is still a land of freedom, that there is a place that's freedom from overtaxation, overregulation, over litigation, and, and, and still has that skilled workforce because we are funding appropriately accountable public schools. It's called Texas. Come on down. that is resounding across this country. We have created more jobs in this state since 2005 to present four out of five jobs created 
in America were created in Texas. Since the summer of 2009 to the summer of this summer, half of the jobs created in America were created in Texas. This is the message that is resonating across this country, and it is one that people are watching. They're, not, they're watching this election cycle. They're wanting to see what's going to happen in the state of Texas. And I have a, 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 I've got a good, I think, handle on what's happening across this state. And, and if it's happening in Texas and, and, and it's happening in the other states, there is a huge wave that's going to crest tomorrow about 7 p.m. Yeah. Texas time. Murphy, you won't be back in the House of Representatives, brother. Texas, and we're going to see it nationally as well. I look forward to the day when, when we get back to Austin, Texas, and we can continue to send a message that there is no place like Texas, that this is still, this is still the state that respects small businessmen and women. It's the state that respects the Constitution of the United States and understands what that Tenth Amendment is all about. It is an important election. I will thank you all for the work that you've done over the course of this election, but particularly in the last two weeks as you've turned out record numbers here in Harris County and the contiguous counties around here to send that powerful message. Thank you for what you're going to do in the next 36 hours yeah. and, 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 and getting those individuals who haven't voted yet to the polls. I can't impress upon you how important it is for us to finish strong, to run through the wire, to make every effort that you can to identify those individuals who haven't voted yet. Make sure that they understand the importance of getting to the polls tomorrow between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. and casting that ballot to send the message across this country, to send this message to Washington, D.C., that Texas is still the land of opportunity and we're going to keep it that way. So your challenge is this, you've got a little bit of time this afternoon to get ready for the big crush tomorrow. And I want to challenge all of you this afternoon, tomorrow, call a friend in, in, in another state. you got friends over and there's 37 governorships going to be decided tomorrow across this country. The most governor elections in, in recent memory at one election cycle. You, there are United States Congress men and women running for office across this country. Every one of those are up and, and, and uh, all across the country. I think a third of the United States Senate is being decided tomorrow. You've got friends and neighbors and colleagues and business acquaintances that you haven't talked to in a long time in other states. Pick up the phone today and love on them a little bit. <laughs> them you're just thinking about it. The governor wanted you to call them and tell them, say, hey, you know what? If you're unhappy where you're living, come on down here to Texas. But while you're there, vote for the small government conservatives on that ballot in their state. And make a difference. Make a difference across this country. Because really what we're trying to do is, is to create a momentum in this country where the people understand competition. You know, we under, the competition is what makes us stronger as a country. And this administration, this Congress that's up there today is trying to make us all look alike, be alike, sound alike, one size fits all. And let me tell you, it will be a disaster. And we need to send that resounding message to Washington, D.C. that, you know, with all due respect, we don't want to look like Connecticut. We want to look uniquely Texas. And with, with all of the, and, and that's the type of competition that ought to occur. And, and this election, we get people focused back on the Constitution of the United States. We get people to really understand what our founding fathers were talking about in the Tenth Amendment, is that the federal government was created by the states to be an agent for the states, not the other way around. And that, and that if, if they will allow us to compete against each other, these, let me tell you, Bobby Jindal over on our, our eastern side in Louisiana, that is a smart, great competitor. 
and he will come up with some wonderful concepts and ideas. And if they will work in Texas, I don't have a problem going over and snitching them from him. And bringing them back to state. Or in, let me tell you, Mary Fallon up in Oklahoma, who's going to be elected up in Oklahoma, she's going to pass tort reform in Oklahoma, and they're going to be a more competitive state because of it. That's the type of competition that this election is really all about. So I want to say thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you're going to do. God bless you and through you. May God continue to bless the great state of Texas. Right.